Okay, so if you have not watched the previous videos, I suggest you do because we're actually uh, showing why you should study both functional harmony as well as non-functional harmony like modal music, uh, what, what not, but we're using functional harmony as our basis to create new, uh, or not new moves, these moves have been done thousands of times, it's just, um, so that's the uh, essence of this series and I will link the first one in the uh the, at the end and in the description as well so uh let's we're gonna use the same exact corral again but we're gonna we're gonna use this just gleam something out of this okay now why would i even bother studying a passage like this um well let's take this part this little uh as a musician, you want to gleam as much you can out of one specific thing. So I take that specific idea. Suddenly we have something else. So taking that one specific move in here, we, have, we now have something else. So let's move on. That's why we're studying music. With Phrygian, we actually have two Picardi third uh, options. If we borrow the one from D minor and use it with Phrygian. In other words, just borrowing the two major chords from that chorale using the same related scale that is related to D minor. Or D minor, A Phrygian is related to D minor, which is related to F. So our home plate, though, is that, that A minor area, okay? Phrygian, but we're going to use those two uh, raised third uh, chords that was in the Bach Chorale, but we're starting in a different location. Right there, I just used one. You can even use some of the same formulas. Like, okay, now you can go back to uh, Phrygian. I, I wrote out a progression though because I, I know people like to have formulas and so but um you should reach a point to where you can start developing formulas very quickly um that would be the whole goal but let's just play through the chord sequence establishing a Phrygian okay that Picardi third that happened on the D except we're not approaching it by any five chord. Picardi third on one in Phrygian, okay? So this will produce a very kind of cool effect. Maybe do a pulse. Start out really light. Maybe get thicker. The first Picardi third instance. Picardi third on one. Convert that to minor. Now we're back in Phrygian. The unstableness of Phrygian. So can Phrygian be dramatic? Of course. You use these two chords. That see, see this little bit of drama it created? The dramatic effect. Our home plate is still right there, but we're, that's almost like the Dorian 4, by the way. And then the Picardi 3rd on the 1, okay? So you could use both those moves that, from the Bach Chorale with Phrygian, the related uh, mode to D minor. There's no rule that says you cannot, and you start learning these tricks over the years. So every time I see like the Bach Chorale um, or something... And remember, you don't have to approach that D with any sort of 5-1 cadence, okay? Um, and you notice what I did there? I used that half-diminished resolution that we studied in previous uh, episodes to go to the uh, Picardi 3rd of uh, Phrygian 1 from the half-diminished. This is why you study music, like it, even with the Bach chorale, I can I could keep gleaming ideas out of this specific chorale, 
and then changing it around to and using non-functional harmony that I already know, instead of learning more and more and more new moves, I need more moves, I need more moves, let's take the moves you have and experiment with using them in non-functional ways. So basically, every time you study a piece of music, or even a small chunk like this, take small aspects of it and use it and memorize the moves as well. They become part of your harmonic vocabulary and that stuff starts stacking even with triad-based music until you reach this point to where there's almost like a never-ending stream of directions you can go. And that's the point you actually want to reach, uh, in my honest opinion. Well, for me personally. For me personally, I wanted to reach a stage where the output of ideas is actually stuff I don't have to sit there and do a lot of guesswork on. And besides the fact I'm saving people a lot of trouble of stuff I had to figure out on my own because Harmony books really don't explain this kind of stuff or even show it, you know. They usually just show the functional major and minor harmony system and then kind of leave you in the cold with the rest of it. And it's weird because historically they broke away from that a long time ago. And that being said, do not neglect studying functional harmony because you're going to find this combination of functional moves with non-functional harmony like modalism. So 